So we were now living in Taiwan. I'm producing my product and shipping around the world. So now I had to learn imports, exports, and my product was metal stamp. I didn't even know something like plastic injection molding existed. Didn't know anything about packaging, inner boxes, master boxes, how many, how many boxes will fit on a container, knew none of that. But a company by the name of The Pampered Chef, don't know if any of you have heard of that company, very big company, run by a woman. And uh, she, she was buying my product. And she asked me, uh, she said, look, you're living in Taiwan. Why don't you take over all my quality control out of Asia? And I thought, wow, you know, this is just pure service. And there's it's simple business. But what did I know about quality control? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But what it was, I didn't anticipate I was growing my career because of my unique I was now going into all these factories and doing her quality control. I was in plastic injection molding, printing factories, packaging, box making, you name it. I was in those factories. And I was growing my knowledge base. My husband retired at age 50, and we moved back to Chicago. Now the pampered chef said to me, well, you can't do my quality control anymore. And I go, how can I do this? I'm living in, a, in the U.S. How am I going to do their quality control for every? And they were, they were, their business was growing. They were probably at maybe four or five hundred million in sales at that time. And um, so I said, okay, look, isn't there another way we could do business together? She says, really, what we would like to have is your creativity in our product development department. Now, my husband was just retired, and we were going to live between. Europe and Effingham, Illinois. I love Midwest. And he said, Karen, you know, if you if you want to work, I'll support you. I'll do any, any way you want to do this. You just have to let me know. But the next day he took a job with the Japanese. So he was now traveling and consulting for the Japanese, and I had no mentor. <laughs> so the third step that of that career was, I don't know where it came from inside me to think of this idea. But I suggested to the pampered chef, I will give you product development free. That's easy. Creativity for me is easy. But what I would like to do is have an opportunity to supply you, because now I speak Chinese. I understand where the good producers are. I know how to control production. I understand cooking utensils because their whole product line were cooking utensils. So that was right down my alley, my unique experience. And um, I said, then if you give me a chance to bid on the manufacturing, I will refund to you 1.5% of the invoice value until I have repaid the product development. So, I'm satisfied you got my product development free, but you're giving me a chance to bid on the manufacturing. Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> because the business then grew from $300,000 in sales to $20 million in the next three years. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> the, first, the first round of product development, I had no engineers, I had no industrial designers, and I saw right away that in business, how it gets done is you point the finger this way when things don't work out. Now, I had to learn that. So I thought, okay, that means I've got to bring in all these people inside my company so I can point the finger. I can be accountable to my customer. And it was amazing to me. I, when I discovered I needed engineers in my own company, I didn't really understand what different engineers did. Where does the mechanical engineer duties stop and the electrical engineer duties begin? So I thought, I know, I'll run an ad in the Chicago Tribune for an engineer. And as I interview them, I'll say, well, tell me what you're doing in your current job. And when they told me that, that's the one I need. Because he was doing what I was looking for. Now, all of this began when I was already 50 years old. Now, I'd appreciate if you tell me I don't look a day over 59. <laughs> but this is 15 years later. And I had risk our personal financial future. My husband said, I'll do whatever you want. It's your time to fly. You followed me everywhere. I, if I hadn't had someone encouraging me or telling me, 
you can do this. I know you can do it. Because when even I wasn't sure I could do it. But he kept telling me that. I had moved back from Taiwan. I, had, I knew no one in Chicago. I knew no mentor I could go to to say, I got this problem, how do you solve it? I knew no one. And he was traveling. And I had risked our financial future. And I can tell you, I, I, are there a bunch of bankers in this room? I would assume there are. Hope so. Okay. I can tell you that bankers started coming through our office on a regular basis. And, and I thought, well, why do they keep coming back so often? And they were using our company as an example of, of a wildly successful business. And, and I was so naive. I thought, well, isn't this what you're supposed to do? Because I didn't have any other comparison, any way to compare that. I was making money, but I can tell you I was never sleeping. And it always surprised me how I could go to bed at night and get up the next morning and have solved the problems that I had the night before. I thought, wow, I'm working 24 hours a day, I can get a lot done. When I was 50 years old, I didn't have a lot of time left, so I had to work fast. But if I had had a community bank that could support me, I was dealing with big national banks in Chicago, and every six months I had new bankers coming in my door. And they said, well, we want, you know, we just want to get to know your business. I thought, I thought I did that six months ago. They were either changing banks or moving up, and nobody really ever knew me. They just knew my financial statements. I would have loved to have a community bank involved with my business at the time, and eventually I found my way back to Effingham, and I found my community bank. So now, let's see, what else? I, this is why I have to have notes, because there's so much I want to tell you. Out of this company with the Pampered Chef, I grew three more businesses. I discovered about myself, I don't like to run them after a certain size because I don't deal well with employee problems. I don't like it. You know, and I just think, you know, toughen up, you know. But it doesn't work that way. So I found that I would, I'm better off to take them to a certain size and either sell them or let somebody else run them. And my son now runs the business with the Cameron Chef, but he has grown that business to other companies. I went down the street and started my last hurrah, I think, called Ignite USA. And we design and engineer and manufacture in Asia the coffee mugs and hydration bottles. We are now the gold standard in coffee <coughs> mugs and hydration bottles. This year we'll do about 45 million sales. We're very profitable and a very successful company. The, the thrill about that business is that it, the coffee mugs never leak and never spill. So you can put them in a briefcase, put them in a backpack, lay them down in the car. They never leak and never spill. So one of the thrills for me, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big flag waver. So one of the thrills for me was to see, I think they're called F-16s. We have a fighter jet of some kind, 15 or 16. Anyway, they, those guys, those pilots and those planes use these coffee mugs because they can do anything with the plane and never have coffee or beverages spilled in the cockpit. That was a thrill to see that. Um, we export uh, our products now all, all over the world, Asia and Europe, and that's a growing market for us. Uh, as the dollar weakens, uh, those markets look very interesting. About eight years ago, the last major thing I did in my company was to hire the most incredible CEO. He is, I, if I removed myself from the business, our employees would never know the difference in the decision making. We think so much alike. That was just pure luck, because I had fired a couple before him. So I've never been shy about sharing my success. My CEO now is a 50% partner with me. He has been granted and given the stock. He did not have to buy it. But while he works now, I can sit back and collect my dividends, and I like that part. <laughs> if I ever sell this business, our employees will get 10%, and they, they will probably be multimillionaires, and it's a thrill for me to see that. One thing I have learned through all of this is that 
running your business, there'll never be such highs and such lows. And when you hit those lows, it's really a big bottom. And I'll share one story with you.